Welcome to County Connection, where we talk about events, services, and programs with Summit County Government. I am your host, Julie Suter, and for our first segment in this October uh, episode, we have Steve Precise, who is an environmental health specialist with our environmental health department. Welcome, Steve. Thank you. And we have Barry Abramowitz, who is the owner of Butterhorn Bakery, and uh, we have you guys here to talk about um, the food safety program um, that public health runs. Um, Steve, why don't you um, kick it off by talking a little bit, um, giving some background on the Summit County Food Retail Program. Um, so the Summit County Food Retail Program, it's a program run by the Environmental Health Department, which is the regulatory arm of the Public Health Department. Um, with, that, with the Environmental Health Department, uh, we license and inspect uh, around 390 restaurants within uh, Summit County. Um, of those 390 restaurants, um, we end up with about 560 inspections that are unannounced inspections. Uh, we're generally going into the facilities about twice a year. Okay, and, so uh, kind of the, the pop quiz of food safety. Yeah, exactly. Knock, knock, we're here. Let's come check out, see what's happening. Okay. Um, and then um, with that, we only have three inspectors doing all that work. Wow, so you are busy folks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so um, can you talk a little bit about some of the um, FDA criteria that you're looking for when you're doing these inspections? Yeah, basically um, we, we do have a, a series of critical type violations and non-critical type violations that we are looking at during our inspection process. Um, critical type violations are violations that can generally relate to foodborne borne illness and then non-critical type violations are uh, violations that are more like physical facilities type things like the floor is not being clean or improper lighting in an area. Okay. Um, with this process, there's 15 of these um, critical violations that the FDA has identified as um, that can relate to a foodborne illness. So those are foodborne illness risk factors. Okay. And some of these foodborne illnesses that people can contract are really serious. Uh, yeah, that's true. They definitely can cause hospitalizations and even deaths at times. Okay. So um, for uh, folks who are doing all the right things on the food safety front, you have the Food Excellence Awards, mm -hmm. um, is that our Food Safety Excellence Awards. Mm -hmm. um, tell us a little bit about that program. Um, so that's a program that we started um, a few years ago here in Summit County. And it's a way really for us inspectors to really give back to the operators um, that have really shown excellence in food safety. Um, so they have to meet a strict set of requirements um, to be able to be recognized for this award. Okay, and what are some of those requirements? Um, so there's four criteria um, that we're looking for uh, for the Food Safety Award. Um, the first is they need to be a full service establishment. So they need to be you know, building sandwiches or making food, handling food. Um, they need to have mechanical refrigeration, uh, be doing wear washing, things along those lines. Um, the second one is that they need to not have um, any violations in the 15 foodborne illness risk factors um, over the past two unannounced regular inspections. Um, the next one is that they can't have any uh, probable foodborne illness um, complaints over the past year with their establishment. And then the final one is one of their staff has to have the eight hour food manager level training. All right. Uh, so, um, one of the winners of the Food Safety Excellence Awards was the Butterhorn Bakery. So, congratulations, Barry. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, so tell us a little bit about um, how, so out of all the, how many, 390 facilities? 390 that, facilities, yep. Um, so how did you make it into the top 10? Well, we try hard to treat everybody who comes into the restaurant as a guest that's coming into your own home. And the last thing I want to do is get anybody sick who mm -hmm. comes into my house. So I eat there as well and I don't want to be sick. My staff doesn't want to be sick. So we take extra measures more than anybody would probably do in their ho own home mm -hmm. to keep everything absolutely sanitary and clean. And we, we stress hand washing with every new employee on how to do it because there's a proper way to wash right. your hands. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And we get everybody involved. I get the whole staff involved with monitoring each other. If they see someone scratch their head, hey, you didn't, you didn't use hand sanitizer, go do it. So everybody's working together as a team in order to maintain the sanitary conditions that are necessary. Uh, the hand washing has to be renewed every year. Even employees who've been there for 10 years or longer have to take um, reviews on proper handling of food, 
proper sanitary conditions. We're we're in a <clears throat> excuse me. We're in a, an environment with people from all over the world, and, <clears throat> and you don't know what people have: colds, influenza. So we we make sure the bathrooms are monitored and cleaned and sanitized on a regular basis throughout the day. Uh, make sure that the staff uses hand sanitizer and wa or wash their hands as often as possible. Um, I offer my entire staff influenza shots every year so they can get immunized. I also have offered management and kitchen the series of hepatitis shots to make sure that everybody is healthy and not in any chance that they're not going to infect anybody mm -hmm. or get anybody sick and nobody coming in is going to get us sick. Right. So we can pass it on. Great. So it sounds mm -hmm. like you're really cultivating a, a culture of food safety. It's in, all about the workplace. It. Mm -hmm. It's all about the corporate culture. Yeah. That's what makes or breaks it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Absolutely. And then uh, I hear that uh, one of your managers, Echo, is playing a really critical role in uh, in leading that um, that culture. Well, you know, I made sure that uh, Echo, who's my general manager, and I have. Teresa, who's an assistant manager, both have the eight-hour management serve safe mm -hmm. class. And if I understand correctly, that's not required in Colorado. It is not required. So it's an Colorado. over and beyond to make mm -hmm. sure that my ma whatever manager is on fully understands what it takes, you know, to keep everything safe. You know, make sure there's no cross-contamination. Make sure no situation happens where we can potentially get someone sick. And, you know, the Butterhorn's been there for 38 years. I've been the own, third owner, I've had it for 13 years, and I don't think we've got anybody sick yet. Well, that's <laughs> an outstanding track record. Mm -hmm, absolutely. <laughs> um, so Steve, are there anything else that other restaurant operators um, could uh, learn from Barry's examples or that you kind of would shine the spotlight on as far as best practices? Um, you know, like Barry was saying, you know, he touched on the, um, the training. It's not something that's required by the state of Colorado, but we definitely see in facilities that either have the eight hour food manager level training or even the two hour food handler training that, you know, you definitely see a, an elevated amount of food safety and food safety awareness in the facilities. You know, also, you know, being a, a long lasting establishment in the county, maintaining staff, which, which can be difficult sometimes and having a present owner, we definitely see that, you know, those have positive effects on the restaurants. All right, fabulous. Mm -hmm. uh, so all of the uh, results of air inspections are available to the public. So, yeah, that's correct. Um, so for folks who are interested in finding out about the results of those inspections, um, as well as the shining stars in our community who um, have received the Food Safety Excellence Awards, where can people find that info? Um, you can find it on our Summit County website under the environmental health page. Uh, all of our inspections are public information and are posted on there. And we also have our nine uh, Food Safety Excellent Award winners on our website currently also. All right, fantastic. Is there anything else that either of you would like to add? Um, we also have uh, twice annually, we have a food safety forum that's hosted at the County Commons building. Uh, one is in August and the other one is in, or sorry, April and September. So we just had one and it's a time for industry and restaurants and the public actually to come in and discuss recent food safety topics and things along those lines. And uh, just look for it in the Summit County Daily. We put it in there twice a year and uh, we want to hear from you. All right, that sounds excellent. Well, thanks so much, guys, for coming in here today, and mm -hmm. congratulations, Barry, on your fine well, work. Take this and go hang it up. All right, <laughs> sounds good. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, for those of you at home, stick with us. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to be talking about winter service enhancements from the Sun Stage.